Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to break on the four game uh, Call of Duty main state on Friday. Really excited about this one. Uh, before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, my name's DK. I make daily videos breaking down NBA, NFL, and esports daily fantasy sports slates. Uh, esports are including Counter-Strike, League of Legends, and this one Call of Duty. Um, so with that out of the way, let's jump in the video. Uh, before we talk about players and their prices for this four game slate, what we can do is look at some Vegas odds. Um, so we have Paris uh, Legion versus Atlanta Phase. Atlanta Phase is the biggest favorites of the day at minus 550. We have Optic Gaming LA versus uh, London Royal Ravens. Uh, we have London Royal Ravens at minus 225 favorites. Toronto Ultra versus New York Subliners. Uh, New York are minus three, 360 favorites. And we have Minnesota versus Florida. Um, we have Florida at minus 140 favorites. So Call of Duty is an interesting game for DFS. Um, it's a little bit different than League of Legends and um, and Counter Strike because there's a, it's a five game series and you really want um, you know the guys that you play obviously to play all five games. Now it can end in three, right? If a team three O's the other team, you don't play the, the last two games. And the rotation goes hard point, which is very very kill dependent. That's the game where you're going to score the most fantasy points. Hard points the first game, then Search and Destroy, which is the, the, the game you score the least in uh, as far as fantasy purposes. Domination, and then Hard Point, S and D. So that's the rotation. So if you if you play players and they 3-0 a team, um, you're probably in rough shape. I and mean, when we did see last week, um, a little simp just went absolutely off uh, when they 3-0'd on Friday or two weeks ago on Friday, and he, I believe, was in the winning lineup. That's pretty rare. You're going to have to have an amazing day. Uh, most of the time, you're going to want that, uh, again, you want to predict at least, uh, you know, the game to a four or five games, because if it only plays three games, you're at a definite disadvantage. There's no rounds not played or games not played bonus, um, like we see, um, you know, with, with Counter-Strike, right? If you 2-0 a team, you get another 20 points. There's not, not that in Call of Duty. So, that's how I like makes it interesting, makes roster construction a little bit interesting. And it all depends kind of on the slate, right? So we saw uh, on Friday slate two weeks ago, the first two games went 3-0, and the last two games are close. And you wanted players in those last two games. Uh, but it kind of depends on the slate, right? So let's just say all four games go the full five games. Then you can definitely, the winning lineups have a, myth, a mismatch of like all different players. But if we see... You know, maybe maybe just one game goes all five, and say three games go 3-0. Then you're going to want that game stack and that game that goes five games. So, um, yeah, really it's all all kind of dependent on um, trying to guess right on the game that you think will go four or five games, right? You don't want it to go 3-0. That, that would really be uh, tough. So, and I think, again, game stacking is definitely viable. If you, if you think maybe three games are blowouts and one, one goes all five games, then obviously you can just game stack that one. You do have to play uh, players from at least two games, but um, yeah, that's kind of the breakdown there for, again, for Call of Duty. Um, there's a captain spot and then four flexes in the team spot. So um, let's now switch over to uh, my Excel doc here. Um, here, give me one sec. Okay, should be, you guys should be able to see this now. Um, all right, so I can tweet this out tomorrow. I tweeted it out a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago, I will tweet this out again tomorrow for you guys to see. What we have here, um, we have obviously the players, we have the team, we have the captain salary. I included it, uh, the regular salary in the flex spot, the Vegas odds, their overall killed out, uh, KD. Their overall kills, overall deaths, average hill time for hard point, average plants for S&D, caps for domination. Those are, um, I got objective um, numbers for, for Call of Duty. Not huge numbers, but they do help slightly. It's, it's a very, very kill-dependent uh, game so for scoring for, for draftings, right? So it's two points for a kill, minus one for a death. You will get like 0.1 points for every second you're in the hard point on average it's about you know a player gets about five or six points for that plants and snd are three but yeah, that's rare i mean you could get like six points in a game or so from from someone who who is like the bomb carry that's somewhat important caps for dom again kind of the same thing you get a few points here and there for that for them but not nothing that's that's big 
that's really like, oh, you really want to focus on those stats. It's really, you know, the overall kills and the KD that's really important there. Also included some some stuff here like the hard point one percentage, S D one percentage, and Dom one percentage, and clearly a team like Atlanta Phase, right? They're a very good team, so they're very good in all aspects. Um, but yeah, I decided to include that in there as well for you guys to see. So First, let's talk about the Atlanta Phase team. Um, salaries right here. Selium 8.4, Abizi 7.4, Simp 8.8, Major Maniac 6.6, .6, and Priestet 7.8. And one of the reasons I wanted to include the overall kills and the overall deaths in there is because a guy like Major Maniac, right? Last time I only included the overall KD. His KD looked good, but he's not a guy that does a lot um, of killing, right? So if you just look at his kills compared to everyone else on the team, he's at 756. Everyone else, like 900, 1,000. So, yeah, he has a decent KD ratio, but he doesn't do a lot. He's more the OBJ guy in the team. So that is important. Now, he's at a really cheap price tag at 6.6K. I think he's definitely still in play, but I just wanted to bring that up. wanted to add that, the overall kills total, just so you can kind of see how they're doing compared to their team. Um, so, yeah, obviously this phase team has upside. They're probably the best team right now in this tournament uh, uh, for this weekend. Um, the issue is, right, there's a possibility this could go 3-0. And we saw the Vegas odds, right, they're the biggest favorites there at minus 550. So there's definitely a chance they um, they could uh, get 3 0 or they could 3-0 um, Paris. But, yeah, if we're talking about my favorite plays on the Atlanta team, if you wanted to stack them, um, you know, a guy like Simp, right, he, he's priced up, but he has huge upside. He's flashed it. Um, he flashed a last or a couple weekends ago. He's the guy that has the most upside in the team. Wouldn't mind pairing with a guy like a BZ at 7.4K if you wanted to go an Atlanta stack. Now, I, I still don't know if the public grasps fully how Call of Duty DFS works. I think they're going to look at um, phases, points per game, and just kind of try to get a lot of Atlanta guys. Because if you're just looking at their points per game, they're really good. Um but they had games that went four or five, um, four or five games besides that first one. So, um, yeah, maybe. I mean, honestly, I think phase will be somewhat popular if if they do go four or five games. They could definitely play off their salaries. But there's a decent chance this game uh, could be a three zero sweep. So that is the risk of those Atlanta guys. If we talk about the Paris guys, um, they're obviously the biggest dogs here, plus three forty five. Um, if we're looking at just the overall KD, right? So we didn't get to see them two weekends ago. Um, Dens is the one guy I would run it back with if I was going to play someone on this team. Now, sure, you're going to have to pay a premium for him at 9K, but really, the way DraftKings did their salaries, you can basically get whoever you want in. Now, you, you might have to play one guy in the like 7K range or whatever, but you have a lot of wiggle room, right? So you can basically almost get whoever else you want, almost get whoever you want in your lineup. So if you want to go that direction, right, if you want to stack the Atlanta-Paris game and hope Paris can keep it close, bring it to four or five games, I think it's intriguing because those Atlanta guys have a lot of upside. The one guy I think I would run it back with again is Dens. So everyone else on the team, I don't think we have to go there. Um, personally, I don't I don't like anyone else. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it would go about that first game. Next game here, we have London versus uh, Optic Gaming LA. So let's talk about London here. Um, clearly, I mean, if we're just looking at overall KD, right, Wuskin at 1.34, that really stands out. Um, now, you're going to have to pay a premium for him at 9.2K, but I think he is someone on this team that um, obviously has a lot of upside. He has the highest KD uh, in this tournament. Um, but if we're just looking at overall kills, right, he's only at 781 compared to some of his teammates. So... Not a guy that's going to go out and get like huge kills, but does have a pretty good, uh, again, KD ratio, which is good, right? So just thought I'd bring that up. Um, you know, the overall kills compared to his teammates, not amazing, but he does have a really, really good KD ratio. So, um, yeah, Wilson's, Wilson's definitely someone I'm looking at just because of that, you know, 1.34 KD. Um, other options on the team. I know Dylan has doesn't have a great KD at 0.93 here, but... He's someone that's kind of been a letdown this year, but he was really, really good last year. And he kind of flashed it that last game um, a couple weekends ago. So Dylan's a guy maybe for low ownership. I wouldn't mind taking a shot there if you want to pair him with like a Wuskin. I think that's doable. On the Optic Gaming LA side, so they've been a team that's surprisingly been struggling. They have a lot of talent on this team. Guys like Dashy, Kenny, Slasher, TJ Haley. Like those are all guys that... 
Um, you know, were really, really good Call of Duty players uh, last year, two years ago, right? They're, they're top tier players. They've just been struggling as a team. Um, J Cap is a guy I'll be completely avoiding. He's just a, an OBJ guy, does not do anything in the kill department, a 0.81 KD. So even for value, again, I don't, I'm not going there. But guys I'm looking at, guys like Dashy, a guy like Slasher, and even a guy like Kenny for value at 7.2K. Um, I know Kenny's KD hasn't been great, but he was considered the best uh, submachine gun player just a year or two ago. Um, so he's someone that, that I think for maybe lower ownership you could look to as a, as a value piece. And I like Dashy as well. He's got the highest KD on the team. Um, him, Slasher, Kenny would probably be the guys that look to the optic gaming side if you want to go kind of a game stack. Um, so that basically wraps it up for the second game. Now we can talk about New York and Toronto. So on the New York side, um, this is a pretty balanced team. They're, they're, they're pretty big favorites here, minus 360. Again, kind of the concern with FaZe is maybe there's a chance they 3-0, right, and they don't get to play games 4 and 5. They're, they're really, the big game is hard point, game 4. If you can get that hard point game in, that's big. The S&D game 5 is not, it's not really key because S&D is a game that, you know, at most a player can get, like, 12, 13 kills, really. You really see anything higher than that. So it's not a huge, huge... Um, you know, score DFS scoring game, or as hard point, you can see players get 30, even 40 kills. Um, but yeah, so the issue with the New York team is again, they're a pretty balanced team. We're just looking at KDs, right? Temp 1.01, Attach 1.04, Zuma 0.95, uh, Accuracy 1.0, and Mac 0.95. So trying to predict which one of these guys is a good play is a little bit tough. Now, the salaries all pretty this are pretty similar as well. So yeah, that is the downside, right? If I was going to play one, uh, probably would be a Tatch, um, followed by Zuma, even though he's got a lower KD. Um, I think those two guys would be the ones I would look to on the New York side. But again, it's a little bit difficult because they are a pretty balanced team. Um, so let's talk about um, Toronto now. Toronto, decent-sized dogs here, plus 245. Um, if we're just looking at KD, again, kind of similar, um, balanced team, but, you know, Methods is the guy that stands out to me the most, obviously, because the KD, right, a 1.11 KD. Um, you know, he does decently in, in like, hard point, too, as well, be in there about 60 seconds. So, that, that is good. Again, these OBJ stats I include in there, they're not a big deal, but, um, just thought I, I would include them, because they, they do help a little bit. Um, yeah, so Methods at his price at 8K, I think it's interesting. If I was going to pair him with somebody, I probably would be Bance just because those two are, are the guys that are, have slayed the most in this team so far. Um, so yeah, that, that New York-Toronto game, just because of the, you know, both teams being pretty balanced, I think maybe those guys go a little bit lower owned. Um, but yeah, there, again, there definitely is some upside if you can pick the right ones, right? In the New York side, obviously on the Toronto side, I think like Bance methods would be guys I would look to there. All right. Lastly, we have Minnesota and Florida. Um, we did not see either of these teams in the, in the series, uh, two weekends ago. So on the Minnesota side, um, they are at, this one should stay close. They're even, whereas Florida slight side fairs are minus 140. The guy that really stands out to me is God Rx. Clearly, with his team, right, if we're just looking at KD, 1.27. The next highest is 1.14 at Assault. Um, so this Minnesota team, God Rx, is one of my favorite plays. I'm looking at him, maybe even in the captain spot. He's someone I really, really like um, just because how dominant he is compared to his team, right? This game should stay close. We're looking at the Vegas odds, right? It's almost a pick em. So, yeah, I really like God Rx there. Um, at that price, I know it's you know 8.6k is somewhat expensive, but again, if we're just looking at the slate, we'll I'll go back to DraftKings at the end. You can almost get whoever you want in your lineup. So Goddard X is a guy that I do really like. He's someone I'm considering for the captain spot for sure. Um, I got, again, I got like a salt. If you want to pair him with someone, I think he would be uh, a, a good pairing, uh, or even Alex there. Uh, but yeah, this Minnesota team again, clearly you can see um, more top heavy, right? So. Guys like as Asim and Silly, don't think I get to them, but a guy like God Rx, I really do like on this slate. And this one should stay close. So hopefully it can go four or five games. He's definitely one of my favorite plays of the day there at that price. And then lastly, we'll talk about uh, Florida. Again, this one's almost a pick em, right? Um, they're slight, slight favorites there, minus 140. Just looking at KD's. Um, you know, I think a guy like um, Skies it has a 1.23 KD. He's someone that stands out the most, obviously. Now, again, 
8.6K, but um, I think, uh, you know, compared to everyone else on this team, we have some guys under 1.0. Next highest is 1.14 at Farrow, who has been a sub. He's been pretty good now. Um, now, again, his overall kills are not going to be as high as these guys because he hasn't played as many games. But Farrow's a guy that I, I think is interesting. Now, again, 9.4K is a pretty, pretty high price, but he's a guy that has flashed some upside here. I wouldn't mind pairing him with Skies if you want to go that direction and, you know, kind of run like a game stack there. Um, but those would be the two guys I'd look to there on the Florida side. Um, and then all in all, yeah, again, average plants. That is the one stat that is somewhat significant because every team usually has their bomb carrier, and a bomb plant is three three points. So if you get like can get like four plants or so, that's 12 points. That's decent, right? So just thought I'd bring up right a guy like Jurd for, for London. He has almost two plants a game. A guy like Asim for Minnesota, right? He's obviously their OBJ player. You can clearly see in some of these stats who their OBJ player is, right? A guy like Zed, 1.10. A guy like Classic, right? He's their their uh, OBJ player, 1.2 uh, plants. So that is somewhat significant. If you can get lucky and maybe get three or four plants, that can help, um, you know, if you want, like, a cheaper player there. Um, but, okay, let's go back to DraftKings now. Again, I will tweet out the spreadsheet, guys. Hopefully that helps you. Um, with your your you know your um, breakdown for the the Call of Duty slate, let's go back to DraftKings now. And yeah, so again, if we're just looking at uh, prices, right? Highest price guys nine point four k. We have a team salary in there too. So say let's talk about the teams really quick, right? So London Royal Ravens are the highest priced team at three k. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that because there is. The, that game should say, I mean, if we're just looking at Vegas, right, that should say relatively close. New York and, and FaZe are the biggest favorites. So we're just going to look for safety. It probably would be FaZe, I mean, at 2.8K. Um, now, I think they are going to be really, really popular as the team spot. So if by the off chance maybe they get upset and don't pull off the win and you fade them, you could be in good shape. But personally, again, for me, I'm probably going to play FaZe in my team spot. So we throw them in there. That's 9.4k remaining. So sure, yeah, captain's going to 1.5x of salary, but um, throw like a, I don't know, let's just say, again, Goddard X is the guy I'm looking at for the captain, throw him in the captain spot. Then you have 8.5k remaining. The highest price guy is 9.4k. You can basically get whoever you want in your lineup. So leaving salary on the table, I think, is a very, very interesting strategy for the slate. Um, and game stacking, too, right? It kind of all depends on the slate. If all four games go five maps, then you can have a mismatch. But say one or two games um, go the full five games and the other two are end in 3-0 fashion, then you're going to want players in those other two games. So it's really about how you think the slate goes. Do you think a team 3-0s? Do you think all games go four or five games, right? So it's a lot of strategy involved. Sure, some luck too. Uh, but I'm really interested to see how this, pays, how this uh, game, uh, the slate pans out. And I think you know, maybe the players on the the teams who have already played are going to be a little bit more popular because they do have some stats up here, whereas the guys, you know, on Minnesota, Florida, and Paris, right, maybe those guys go a little bit lower owned because stats, stats are up on DraftKings, and stats aren't easy to find. So, yeah, like, like I said, if you guys enjoy this video, if you guys enjoy that spreadsheet, would really appreciate um, if you could like this video, subscribe again. I think this is going to conclude the video, so... Um, put a lot of time into that, uh, the spreadsheet, so really would appreciate if you guys could like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, again, I will tweet that out tomorrow. Be in the lookout for that. Um, but yeah, thanks again for everyone to come in to check out the video. really do appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you all in the next video um, for Call of Duty.